Hello, everybody. This is Yang Family Tai Chi traditional long form. And this is the first class for section two. So we uh, a lot of people have reservations about starting section two because, you know, it has kicking and it has some other things, but uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> the uh, important thing is you all know section one. Master Young has said that all the health benefits are in section one. So uh, section two is physically a little more difficult, but the foundations are in section one. The other thing that you will learn in section two that is a little different from section one is section one is in what I consider the straits. In other words, like north, south, east, and west. Section two, you start having the diagonals. And um, you learned how to do like bow stance and so on in the first section. And you will do the same thing, but on the diagonals in second section. And you would think that it's similar enough that it would be easy but you do have to be careful. So um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use section one as the warm up for this class, since you don't know any of section two yet. So I'm gonna turn around and we're gonna do section one together, okay? So, Stand with your feet, shoulders width apart, and head up, tailbone down, hands by your side. Prepare. Opening, rotate your arms and pull them up to shoulder level. Press down almost to the bottom. Grasp the bird's tail, ward off left. Shift left, turn right, all the weight on the right. Step and close, shift weight, turn. Ward off right, shift right, turn the left toe to the corner. Pull left, ward off down right, release the right foot. Step and close, shift weight, and separate. Roll back. Rotate your arms as you reach to the corner. Circle back as your weight comes back and you get to the other corner. Press, circle in the right. Attach the left. Expand forward. Push. Square up your shoulders, flatten your hands. Come back over a ball, hands in front of your chest and push to shoulder level. Single width, shift back as you flatten your hands. Turn and pull all the way around. Press down, ward off with the left, hook hand with the right. Standing ward off, step, deflect, strike. Raise hands and step forward. Shift right, turn the left toe to the corner. Push off the ball of the right foot as you circle your arms. Root the right heel and close. White crane spreads its wings. Rotate your hands. Pull down, all the weight goes to the back. Circle your arms, step and close, turn, step and separate. Left brush knee, 
rotate your hands. Swing, step, rush, strike. Hands strum salute. Yield forward, pull in the back foot. Push off the ball of the front foot. Circle your arms, root the left heel and set. Left brush knee. Rotate your right palm up. Swing, step, rush, strike. Right brush knee. Shift back, left hand comes up part way. Turn the left toe to the corner, hands come to the center. Swing, step, rush, strike. Left brush knee, shift back, hand, right hand comes up part way. Right foot goes to the corner, hands come to the center. Swing, step, rush, strike. Hand strum salute, yield forward, pull in the back foot. Push off the ball of the front foot as you circle your arms, root the left heel and set. Left brush knee, turn your right palm up. Swing, step, rush, strike. Parry, block and punch. Shift weight back and pull up your left hand part way. Turn the left toe to the corner, hands come to the center. Pull down. Swing, step, one line, two sides. Parry, block, and punch. Apparent close up. Yield forward, turn over your left hand. Pass under the upper part of the right, release the right fist, pull back, square up your hands in front of your chest and push forward. Cross hands, shift your weight to the right, chop, turn the right foot to the straight, move your weight to the left as your palms go back, step as you cross on the bottom, even out your weight as you cross to the top. And that is cross hands. So if we were only doing the first section, we would close there. But since we're going on to the second section, that's where your second section begins. So are there any questions on the first section? No? Okay. So I was talking to you before about moving to the diagonal. And the very first move of the section, second section does that. So I'm going to show you the first half of the first move, which is Embrace Tiger, Return to Mountain. And uh, I will do it in the direction that you will be doing it. And then we'll break it down, okay? So if you are in cross hands, you would be here. And what it looks like is this. Shift. So it looks like a diagonal right brush knee. Okay. But the transition is a little tricky. So let's just look at the footwork, okay? Footwork in the direction you would be doing it. If we started here, you would be kind of like in opening, right? Your feet are straight forward. What you're going to do is you're going to shift your weight to the right enough to release the left. Then you're going to pivot on the heel of the left so that it is between the corner and the straight. 
Then you're going to shift your weight back and release the front foot. You're going to pull it in and out for a bow stance just inside the corner. So if you think of a bow stance, okay, think of a bow stance. If this is your back foot and this is your front foot, okay, you have a 45 degree angle. And in the first section, you're either doing it this way or this way, okay? So it's either, it's one of the square directions, okay? But here, what you're going to do is you're going to do it this way. So it's not this way and it's not all the way this way. It's kind of in between. It is a standard bow stand. It's just directionally a little askew of where you had done it before in the first section. Okay, so what happens is that when you were here and you turn your foot between the corner and the straight, then that sets your back foot. So from this back foot, you're going to set a bow stance out here. And this is going to be inside the corner. So that if you turn your feet so that they were parallel, you still have shoulders width apart between your feet. Okay, there's a great temptation not to step wide enough. So very often what happens is this, you turn and then you come in and you step here because that feels comfortable. But then when you turn your foot, you end up like that and your feet are too close together. So make sure to step wide enough when you step up and you will be much more stable. And the other thing is, when you're stepping here, you shift your weight to the right so that you can pivot on the left. So you're pivoting here and you're between the corner and the straight. When you step out there, I want you to pull in and then step out. You will feel much more stable because your weight will center before you step out and your hips will align before you move. So there's also a martial application to why you do that. And I'll show you that a little bit later. So let's try that, okay? So, if we're, I'm doing the same direction as you, we're going to shift to the right, turn your toe, pass the corner, but not to straight. Then you're going to come in and step out. Heel ball, toe, bend knee. Okay, any questions on that? Pretty straightforward, right? Okay. Now the hands. Well, actually, let's do this a couple more times because I want to make sure that you're stable on this. Okay, so we'll do it a couple more times. You are square, you shift to the right, you turn your toe past the corner, but not yet straight. You put your weight on the left, pull in, step out, make sure you're wide enough, and shift weight. And last time, here, you're going to shift to the right, turn the left toe past the corner, Shift your weight back, 
pull in, step out to bow stance, shift weight. Okay? Now the hands. I'm going to do it once in the direction you would be doing it, and then I'm going to turn it around so that you can see better. Okay? So what it looks like when you're doing it would be like this. You're going to start at cross hands, and you're going to shift right. You're going to turn your toe, and then you're going to separate. Pull in, swing, step, just like a right brush knee, turn, and strike. Okay. So the part that's tricky on this, of course, is the transition. Okay. When you are in cross hands, the important thing to remember with cross hands is cross hands is a double ward off. So if you were to look at the sides, I want you to make sure you have space. Okay? I don't want you to be here. I want you to be out here. And if I were going to do this toward, uh, I'm going to do it in this direction. Maybe you can see that. Okay. So, when I move my weight to the right and turn my toe in, my hands have not moved. As I shift my weight back, I'm going to separate my hands. And then I'm going to circle and swing step. So let's see if I, if I show it to you maybe this way, here. Well, maybe that was better, okay. So when, what I want to show you is that when I am turning my foot here, when I shift my weight back, I want to separate. So maybe, okay, here. When I shift my weight back, I am separating. Can you see that? I'm separating. Why am I doing that? I am doing that so that this hand has space to swing and this hand makes a circle to press down. So this circle comes out and down. You see that? It's out and down. So I don't know how which direction work, works best, but Let's try this one. So out. So since you already knew what right brush knee looked like. So when you were doing right brush knee in the first section, what it looked like was this. You were here, and you came up, and you turned, everything came to the center, and you went swing, step, brush, strike. Here, because the transition is di different, and you're going to the diagonal. So if I started an, on the diagonal here, I would be coming in like this and separating, swing, step, brush. Step. 
So the end is the same, but the, the start is a little different. So the trick really is to remember to separate. So if I were here and I turn, I would have to separate, swing, step, brush, strike. Basically not quite to the corner. Yes, Erlen. I didn't realize I wasn't on mute. Sorry. I hope I was. There wasn't any weird noises coming from me. No. Um, <laughs> so when you when you do that separate, are you kind of like um, like when you get to here, you you scoot back and you separate. Are you kind of like are you kind of like leaving? Are are you kind of like um, your arm is kind of staying in the same place because you're you see what I mean? Do you see how my Arm kind of looks like I'm separating, but it's not like coming closer or farther away. This one, it's kind of yeah. like just the one so, when the, the the kind of one in front is kind of moving back, but the one so in back. Think of it this way: the the one in front is moving out. Okay, yeah. so you do not want to pull this one in. You want to so here, you want to move this one out to clear space for this one. So think of it that way. So when you're here and you move your weight back, as you move your weight back, yes, this stays in the same relative position to your body, but this is moving out more, right? It's as if when you were here, this one stays where it is and this one comes in with your body. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Thank you. And then this not only gives this one space to swing, but it gives this one space to circle. Thank you. So yeah. no collisions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other question? Yes, uh, please, Rita. The yeah. heels, the position of the heels. I go in like this, then I come in like this, and then do they have to be in the line, the two heels? Well, what happens is that when you come in, this one uh, basically sets the back foot of your bow stance. So what you're going to do is you're going to come back Pull in, and then you're going to step out to a bow stance relative to this foot. So you're going to have 45 degrees between. You're going to have shoulders width apart, and it's going to be just inside of this corner. Okay. Okay. So don't think about it about the heels being in a line in one way or the other. Think about making a good bow stance. Okay. Okay, once your back foot is set, your front foot makes a bow stance relative to that back foot. Okay? Okay. So in terms of uh, the pulling in and stepping out. So very often we pull in and step out, for example, uh, left ward off to right ward off. Okay, when you are in left ward off, and you go to right ward off, you essentially stack up before you step out, right? And very often, that is the function of pulling in slightly. It's to stack before you move uh, forward. Uh, in this case, it has a slightly different meaning because in addition to allowing you to stack, it allows you to avoid your opponent. So essentially, what you're doing here is 
when you're coming in, it's as if your opponent was coming toward you and you are avoiding them, stepping around them, okay? So in addition to being better for your stance, it also allows you to avoid your opponent. And embrace tiger return to mountain, the embrace part has to do with the stepping around. Because when you step around, what happens is your opponent is here. If, he, if the opponent was here, you're stepping around them. So now you're behind them. And the embrace part is this. You are essentially pushing them over your leg. But it's when we do it, we stylize it to become more like right brush knee. But the original name had to do with basically embracing your opponent so that they came over your knee. But we, we now show it as a, like a right brush knee. Okay. Questions? No? Okay, so let's try it. I, I don't know how to do this. I'm just gonna do it in a bunch of different directions in the hopes that it helps you see, you know, <laughs> different angles. So I'm gonna do it in the direction you you would be doing it first. And then I'm gonna do it in four directions because each time I do a different direction, you see a different little part, okay? So if I'm here, and I'm at cross hands. I'm shifting my weight to the right. I turn my left foot so it's past the corner. I shift my weight back, separate my arms. I pull in the right foot. Swing, step. I'm looking, it's just like a right brush knee. I'm looking toward the left hand. Then my gaze changes to the front. And then I end up looking just inside the corner. Okay. So if I start in this direction, I'm here. And I'm going to shift my weight to the right. Turn my left toe inside the corner. Shift my weight back and separate my arms. Pull in my right foot as I start swinging. And as I end up, I step, rush, strike. And this way, I'm crossing. I'm shifting to the right. I turn my left toe past the corner. I shift my weight back and separate. Swing, step, brush, strike. This way. Shift right, turn the left toe past the corner. Shift weight back as you separate your hands. Swing, step, brush, strike. Yes. So I think I was looking backward too far or something because it, from watching you, when you've done your swing step, your tiger mouth is addressing one of the four walls, flat, one of the four square directions, right? It shouldn't, so, be, it shouldn't be like back here. It should be like to the wall. Is that right? Is that right? Uh, I'll tell you in a second. Yes, it is okay. for the wall. Yes. I don't know if I'm doing, I don't know if I'm doing that or not. Because, okay. because think of it this way, when you're, when you're doing it to the straight, okay, if you were doing a right brush knee, okay, 
that's toward the corner when the front foot is toward the straight. So if this were to the corner, that is, if I switched here, then it would be <laughs> but, but you know what happens when you start doing things to the corner is nothing feels right. So, you exactly. know. Exactly. Nothing feels right because you had little uh, kind of touchstone points, you know, <laughs> that you were regulating your directions toward. And yes, but that's, uh, but the main thing I think that's problematic is that people do not step wide enough because then you lose your stability if you don't step wide enough. So that's the most important tip for Embrace Tiger from my perspective, that you step wide enough. Maybe I'll trace my feet in a proper bow step so that I can put them on the ground and turn it in the corner and see it to stand. That yeah, way. see, if you had a proper bow stance and you yeah. Ta -da. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but the thing that makes this even more difficult is that it would be one thing if your front foot were exactly to the corner, but it's not. It's inside the corner, and this is inside the corner. So, you know, you have even less reference. But something to work on. <laughs> so are there any questions? Yes, please. Yes. I turn, where does the movement come from? From my, from my, bell, from my belly button or, or my hips or my... It comes from your feet. Completely, okay. So here, I'm here. I'm shifting weight. I'm coming back. I'm turning and swing step. When I go toward the inside of the corner, I am pushing off my back foot. That's where my energy is coming from, the back foot. Okay. Yes. Hey, how about we practice that a couple more times? And I'll do it in the direction that you would be doing it because I don't know, what is easiest to follow? <laughs> because I'm, uh, my back is toward you when I start, but then your back is toward me when I finish. <laughs> okay. So let's start this way, because this is the direction you would be going in at the end of cross hands, okay? So you're going to shift your weight to the right, and you're going to turn inside the corner. Then you're going to shift your weight back as your hands separate. Then you're going to swing, step, rush. Strike. Also, don't be too enthusiastic about your strike, meaning don't bend your knee over your toes. Sometimes people get and then you're out of balance. So when you're pressing down, keep your distance here. There's a great temptation to come in. Don't come in, press down. Think about it this way. Someone's punching toward you. You're, press, you're deflecting them away. So you don't wanna do that right next to your body. They're punching, you wanna deflect them further out 
Okay, so don't come in here. Just left. Yeah. Does your left hand make like a circle when you swing? Your left hand right. does a like this. swing. Right. It's like a, you do like a circle, right? Yes, it, it does like most of a circle. Okay. You just it's just like a right brush knee. You're gonna swing out. So like a half circle. Yeah. Okay. Sort of like a half circle. Like three quarters of a circle, actually, because okay. you're starting here right. and you're here at the end. Okay. okay. It's like you're saying hi over there. Uh, okay. Uh, now you're, when you, if you did this just swinging like this, you do just swinging, um, you're not going to get to the corner. So, so if you were thinking about right brush knee, when you're swinging, you wanted to get to that corner, but you're not going to get there doing this. The only way you get there is if you turn your body, right? I don't want you to get out here by opening up your chest. I want you to get there by turning your body. Okay. So when you're here, you're separating, you're swinging. At the moment that swing step, is your chest pretty much to the wall? Yes. Okay. Toward the Thank wall. You. And yep. then you're going to, because if you think of it just like the uh, right, uh, the uh, right brush knee, if you were here, when you swing, you're pretty turned, right? And then you turn back to the square when you start. Yeah, I think the reason why I was overreaching beyond was because I'm used to doing the reaching there because that's where we reach, but also because I think I was just overturned. Because if I if I if my chest is to the straight, then I'm not going to go way back there. Okay. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Sure. So I want you to think about when you're doing your swing step, you're going to have one hand go up and the other hand go down. So it, um, just to show you what the swing step looks like. So when you're swinging, this one goes down and this one goes up. Okay. So you have one up and one down. And think of it this way. The swing, the big swing is from the shoulder. The little one pressed down is from the elbow. 
So you're making two circles. One is like a shoulder circle, and the other one is like an elbow circle. So you're pressing down. Does that make sense? So the hard part is to make everything uh, line up at the same time. So when you're here, you're going to separate as you shift your weight back. You pull your hand back, swing, step. When you step, this hand is there and this hand has, is, has deflected down. So basically, at this point, everything has landed at this like snapshot. Then as you shift weight, you start moving. Okay. But I want you to make sure that once when your foot lands, that your hands have reached this point. Because if they have not, you're not going to be able to coordinate the rest of it. Okay. So think about making circles. Okay. You're when when you're here. You separate, then one up, one down, land, everything at the same time. I think, Junkie, you're, you're, you should think more about making this circle, okay? Here, I want you to think on this hand of coming out and down. Okay. Out and down. Because what happens for you is, your problem is you feel like one hand is going a much shorter distance than the other, and that's why it's harder for you to coordinate. So if you think about it this way, and you're going up and down, it would be easier for you to coordinate. Thank you. Out and yes, better because you landed at the same time. <laughs> Thank you. The other thing um, that I want you to think about is when you come here and you've done your circles, Swing, step. What I want you to think of moving your hands this way. So don't move this hand out and in. Okay. I want you to just come in. Okay. So you've done your swing step. All I want you to do is in and out. Like okay. It. Yes. You're getting your coordination points, you know.
separate, one up, one down, swing, step, brush, spread. Think about keeping your circles. Shift, turn, separate, up, down, step. Then move in, out, strike. So the way the circle works is here. Looking at this hand, what you're going to do is out and down, out and down. Yes. Does that feel better? <laughs> it's more natural. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so your left hand is swinging down. It doesn't come up. Okay. this so what happens is here when you separate only the right one goes up the left one goes down i'm gonna work out <laughs> It's just, it's just a matter of practice, okay? Separate, one up, one down. Step, one in, one out. Strike. Okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? No? No? Okay. So let's... Try it from cross hand. Okay, so we're here. Your cross hands, don't forget to leave space between your chest and your hands. You're going to shift your weight to the right, turn the left toe past the corner, but not quite straight. Shift weight back, separate your hands, swing. Step, brush, strike. Okay. One more time, I'm going to do it this way. Okay. So we're going to go shift, turn, separate as you shift weight back, swing, step, Brush, strike. Okay. So make your moves big enough. So what, what do I mean by that? When I come here and I separate, I have a big swing down and step. 
Next one, when my left hand comes in, I have a big sweep on the right when I strike, okay? So make sure you sweep out as you strike. Yes. I might, uh, I don't have any more battery, I'm sorry. My, bad, my, my computer's gonna shut oh, down. Oh, that's okay. We're almost at the end of class anyway. Okay. okay. We'll do it one last time and then we'll close class. Okay. So cross hands, shift right, turn the left toe past the corner. Shift weight back, separate your hands. Pull in the right foot, swing, step, brush, strike. Okay. So thank you very much. Next time we'll get to the second half of Embrace Tiger Return to Mountain. <laughs> this is like uh, grass the bird's tail. It comes in little pieces. <laughs> Thank you, Rita. Thank you, Rita. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. You. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.